Hi, everybody. It's Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. We're back at our Fountainhead Studios in, uh, on Westman Street. Uh, we are on the unceded territory of the Coquitlam First Nation. And uh, again, we've got our municipal update for the 2022 election which of course is October 15th, and part of that election is for school trustee. Uh, and today we do have uh, uh, Belinda Wheatley. Welcome to the show. Uh, Belinda, tell us uh, kind of, I guess, being a school trustee or why you would like to be a school trustee. Okay, so I, I, um, I'm, I'm a teacher as I'm in the school district, and I feel, um, I, I just feel concerned right now about the direction that uh, some areas are going. And that's, and I've always, all my work that I've ever done has always been around children. And I, I have a passion to do even more, and I feel as a school trustee, we could reach even more children. Yeah, so which, which school are you in this area? Are you a teacher in this no, school, SD43? Well, I'm a Montessori teacher, uh, and I also have my early childhood education, and I'm a special needs uh, educator, and I'm in Burnaby School District. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so basically a bit about yourself. I mean... Uh, yeah, so I are. think, um, first of all, I'm a mum. I have three children, adult children, and I just recently became a grandmother, which is very exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so that's, uh, that's my, always my big thing. I'm a teacher, as I just ex explained. And being an immigrant, I feel as well, is a big advantage because Canadian, uh, well, Canada, and as well as Coquitlam, uh, it's very diverse. We have a very, very diverse population. And I can, as an immigrant, you just feel this instant connection with other immigrants. We all have a similar story to tell. And uh, obviously we come from all over the world, but we can connect on levels. And I feel I can represent uh, immigrants, uh, all immigrants. And I think that's a big advantage. And, uh, and I also am a businesswoman. I have uh, had numerous businesses back in South Africa, where I come from. And, and currently now I have a business as well. Mm. So in property management. So so why why the interest of being a school trustee? I mean, usually you know teacher makes sense, but you know school trustee is usually they, they retire. The teachers are retired and they become a school trustee or, or a mom or somebody who's you know concerned. Or just 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 what is your interest in being a school well, trustee? Well, it, it just as I said, just to to be able to have more of uh, input into a larger area. Yeah. You know, in the in the past, I've had um, I used to uh, my first degree I got was uh, in nutrition. So I was I'm a holistic nutritionist and I used to go around, travel around the lower mainland, actually um, talking with parents and on, on health and lifestyle and um, and for eating healthy for children. So it always revolved around, around children. Then I, I actually raised a lot of uh, money for a school in Africa. It was, called, it was called Schools for Africa. And I took a team of people over there and we renovated a school and we provided them with blackboards and chairs and tables and outhouses and supplies. And again, and then we, you know, and were able to teach there as well, which was a wonderful experience. But again, it was always revolved around children. So I just feel as a school trustee, we can, you know, I, I've got a lot to offer. And um, I just feel that I can um, be a, a, a good team player, you know, with uh, the existing board. And uh, that's, that's my hope anyway. So what is a school trustee? I mean, for most of us know what councillors or mayors do, but what, mm -hmm. just for folks out there, like as a school trustee, what, what sort of things do you have decisions and power over? And, um, you know, what, what, what can you change and can't change? Well, as an individual, you don't have any real authority at all. Uh, but there, uh, from the government level down, there are policies and, and, and then you have the BCTF and then you have the different unions and you have uh, MLAs, there's, there's rules and there's uh, things, a lot of things that have to be considered. And then as a, as a team, you work together to come up with decisions on what's gonna be best for your, um, how to implement those. Yeah, so so yes. obviously you you have to deal with the finances of the of the school mm -hmm. district. It was SD forty three. Mm -hmm. So and and what else would you would you would you basically be well addressing? as far as decisions with regarding to uh, new schools mm -hmm. being built? Like we there's a uh, district forty three now has a new school that's going to be built up on Burke Mountain, one hundred thirty five million dollars, uh, some high school, middle school. That obviously the trustees have got a lot of input into that. 
what are the needs of the community and um, I know they've Im implemented or they've opened up a lot of uh, space for before school care and uh, and daycare after school care as well because that's a need of the community so that the the school board would have a lot of input with with that mm. um, they also have as far as maintenance for for the schools um, there's a lot of money that needs to be spent on just maintaining the schools upgrading the schools and um, and also there's a, a big focus on um, you know, lessening the footprint of the carbon footprint, and it, you know, and looking into that as well. And there are expectations uh, from the government for 20, 2030 and uh, and on into the future. So they have to plan appropriately, financially, and um, and save for that. And then, of course, you've always got unforeseen things that come up as well as the international school program where uh, that's a big part of um, the, the SD 43. There are a lot of uh, international students that do come here and th that has that takes a lot of organization. Um, there's also the summer school programs that's also like a big part. So the, the trustees are really making a lot of big decisions about the running of the whole district. Yeah. How do you think the district is running with financially? How do you think it's running? Really good. Okay. Yeah. You just so for yourself, it would just be continuing what you think is a good job, and just yeah, I think they're doing an amazing job. You know, I I, I figured I think it was about seven to ten years ago there was there was a real issue there, but that they, they've overcome that and they they're doing extremely well, and um, and they're partnering with the with the um, the government to actually contribute. I think it's twenty five million into the new school. Yeah, but I know, the, you know, financially it sounds, you know, it's it can be a challenge in the past. If you look at Vancouver, sometimes you get these older buildings and you're, you don't have enough land and the school district has sold land. And then, you know, so what is your thoughts around that kind of financial, you know, as a property management person mm -hmm. or what do you what do you think is? Uh, uh, They've made good decisions. You know, they closed down a, um, the smaller schools the older schools uh, that were costing a lot of money, where, uh, where there was maintenance. Uh, I actually taught in one of those schools that was being rented from SD43 and it needed a lot of maintenance. Mm. And then of course, you know, the cost of running all these smaller schools. So that was a really good decision. And they also sold of land um, at some of the schools uh, and that became residential land. It was an enormous uh, school. And they, so that was a really good revenue source. So um, from what I've seen, I think they, they're doing a really good job. Okay. Um, but I also think the other part too, we saw that in Chilliwack, I think, or what, you know, from a school trustee, you have, you have input on policy or some of the educational components of a school. Is that, is that also part of it? Yes, it is. And what, does, what yeah. does that cover? Like, I mean, it seems like people, uh, when I went to school, you thought, oh, so they're just teaching us what they want to teach us. So, mm -hmm. so, so, what kind of things is a school trustee able to sort of uh, advocate for, or change, or, or? Well, as far as uh, they do not decide on curriculum, mm. that comes down from the government, and then of course it goes through uh, BCTF as well, and then they are just they just implementing the different um, what the government is actually putting forward and their expectations. So they're not actually, as trustees, not making those decisions. Right, so it's just pure financial. I'm just curious because it, it just seems that, um, so when I'm in school and I'm, I'm the curriculum I'm getting, is it from the BC government or is it from the school trustees to the district? I just, yeah. I, I, I don't. From what I understand, yeah. of course, this is all new for me yeah, too. Just, I'm, and I'm learning I've, here. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll, I will be learning a lot more too. Yeah. Um, but from what I understand, yes, there's, there, there's different layers from the government down and then the, 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 the trustees then make decisions about how to, how to implement it. Yeah, but it's, it's just the reason I'm asking is it's sometimes, you know, school trustee is kind of a job where, you know, like in Port Coquitlam, for example, we had two trustees, no opposition, right? In yeah. previous elections, you had like almost like we need someone to be a school trustee. And next thing you know, 10 people show up because they think they're the only person. Um, but at the same time, I think people, you think they undervalue what a school trustee, outside of financial, I'm just trying to, there's, there's obviously seems to be some influence it has on the education of our kids. Is, is that right. Correct? Well, I mean, District 43 is uh, a large district. 
It's a very, dis it's a very successful district as well. And it has uh, many programs, but we do have three, five, well, three cities, and then we have Anmore and Balcarra as well. Right. So what, I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, is that everybody who seemed to be upset, I guess, when we sort of, I can't remember the person's name in Sherlock, about you know, what was being taught um, around sexual you know, preferences and mm -hmm. sexual education. So, mm -hmm. And I'm just trying, like one of your platforms is student first. So a school should provide education skills, not political indoctrination. So I'm just, is that something that you can affect? Is, is the, the political indoctrination or, or how does that work? And how does that indoctrination come into the school system? And I'm just right. educating I, I, I think with the, the sexualization, um, I think that's really a platform where we want to have, originally, uh, there was a, a platform where we had uh, somebody coming into the schools, so the parents were notified about that, and then they had the choice on whether they would like their children to attend that pro uh, the program or the talk, yeah. and the parents, so they could attend, they were notified, they, had, they were invited to come the night before, and they could then um, be with their children during the talk. So if there were, qu obviously there would be questions and that afterwards, so the parents were very involved. Whereas now it has been made curriculum, and, um, and so they, they don't have to notify the parents. And uh, that I think is, is that we need to have a look at. Because the parent, it's a very sensitive issue um, about a, a sexualization uh, of children and, um, and how is it done. And also it has to be done in an appropriate way. When you understand child brain development and child psychology, there are certain times in a child's life when certain things are appropriate for a child to learn. And that's what we would like to look. And we'd like the parents, we'd just like transparency because there is a lot of talk about it and uh, for parents to have an opportunity to come in and see uh, what is actually being done, what books there are in the libraries, how it's been implemented. I think that would solve a lot of uh, problems you know, that they're having with that. So, but I guess, you know, uh, I'm, if you have no control over the school mm -hmm. curriculum, I mean, how then, how do you stop what you see as, as a process of delivery that doesn't quite work? Well, I think for you? that, yeah, so that's where parents' voice comes in because we want, we need the parents, they need to have some input. There needs to be transparency, there needs to be, once, you know, I always just feel that, um, the minute you open up discussion and people can dialogue honestly with each other, then immediately then it, it helps to, for once people have an understanding on what's happening on, then people, what's happening, then people uh, feel confident and then they, then they can develop some trust around it. But when things are not, when there is not the transparency that they need, then suspicion creeps in. So if that's happening, then we need to address that. So it's not that we're going to affect the curriculum, but we can maybe have opportunities for parents to to know what's what's happening around that particular issue. And, and I just trying to, I just, I guess for me, it's like you know, we see people who are concerned about the school trustees' impact, and and basically you're saying that there is none. Like if there's a book in the in the in the library that's that you feel or a parent feels is is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. That book just stays there, based on what I'm hearing. Or, or, or as a school trustee, can you get the book out? Well, I'm I'm not too sure if that a trustee could get the book out, but we would have to look into who actually approves certain books, mm. and, um, and if there are enough parents that are unhappy with that with particular particular books, well, then we would have to look at it because mm. ultimately, these are not the educators' children. These are, we're entrusted with their children. And if, we, if, if, they're not, if they're not happy with how it's been done, they need to have a voice and they need to know and they need transparency. And I think we, we can encourage that, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to, I just, to me, it's, it's sort of like, you know, I always see school trustees, like I said earlier, like people don't even apply for it sometimes, but yeah. at the same time, we're saying that, you know, obviously management of the facilities makes sense, but in a sense of, of, of affecting uh, political indoctrination of whatever, and that's a, 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 I'm just curious how you've changed that if you're really not 
able if to you change don't it. Have, right. You have no tools, right? And then all you create is, and then just, you know, we talked about earlier, I agree with discourse where people can talk to each other, but it does feel like we can't have these conversations because it will become emotional or it'll become mm -hmm. uh, spiritual or it'll become something, right? So, so how do you manage that when you have the balance of one side? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I wouldn't want the job. You know, if, if so, if as a trustee, no. Well, no, I, I want the job as a trustee because I don't have to actually. I can't change anything, but but it just you know, in a room of mm. people who are emotionally charged about some issue, uh, whether it's spiritual or educational. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, how do you have a civil conversation around that if if the room is split or even not split mm -hmm. to some a, a noisy minority? Well, I think I think people, you know, I mean, there's. I went to a very lively meeting. It had nothing to do with the schools. It was to do with farming. <laughs> and there was a very lively discussion and a lot of emotion. And it was very well managed and controlled. Yes, mm. there were some eruptions, but it would always sort of, you know, level out. I think we're all adults and we're all mature enough to know. And um, they are, you know, so I, I don't really see that it would be a big problem. Okay. I mean, like, say, for example, the green issue where, uh, you know, I would love to see the schools having a lighter footprint and, uh, and, and developing from a grassroots level up more, um, in, more programs for the children to, like, just whether it's composting or recycling, it's just not happening. Um, and then there's this huge, uh, you know, sort of agenda that we, not actually, agenda is not the right word, there's this huge, um, push on environmental and expectations, but then there's this massive gap, and then what are we doing in the school level? You know, that could be really emotional too for some people. Um, but we need, to, I mean, we need to, uh, do we need to come together? We need to work together, and we need to come up with a plan that the majority of people, and that's a great thing about living in a democracy, is that we all have a say, we have free choice, we have free speech, and we're entitled to practice that, and everyone's entitled to practice that. And we, it needs to be encouraged. And people, the parents need to feel empowered that they do have a voice and that their voices do count. And that is what we want to do, is empower the parents through knowledge. You know, whether it's, that's all of us become empowered through knowledge, you know. And just, you know, you use the word parents' voice, I mean, and just, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's, un, it's kind of unusual, like typically a, a school trustee is a single person that says, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, in your case, you've got yourself and, uh, and two other candidates, I guess, who are running for school district trustee, mm -hmm. uh, school district trustee, <laughs> school trustee in SD43. In SD yeah. So, so uh, yes, sense, and of course, that's tied to, I guess, another, you, you were saying earlier, 90, 9, 29 candidates over eight school districts. So, yeah. just, so tell us a bit about this, this uh, parent's voice and, and why you feel that you, yeah, you need to be part of a, this collective definitely. slate. I think people, because there's a need, you know, it started off, I think I was the first one. <laughs> I've said, you know, I would like to run as a trustee. And, um, and then it just, and then honestly, it was in the space of a, a week or two, and then there were 29 people that were interested in, in, in running. So, um, yeah, I, I think that just is a reflection of how parents are feeling. I've done a lot of door knocking uh, just for the campaign. And I can honestly tell you that, that people are very, very excited and very supportive. The parents are excited to feel that they, they will have a voice, you know, in, in, in how they, in what the children are being taught. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, and just to help people out, I, I know the term slate, you know, mm -hmm. when we have uh, councils, uh, some, some cities can run a slate, like Vancouver can run a slate. Uh, in, in places like Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, it's really you're, you're on your own as a councillor and, uh, and mayor. So in this case, you're running a slate. So even though the 29 people showed up, th there has to be some sort of outside of the title parent's voice. I mean... Uh, it's kind of a coordinated kind of effort. I mean, everybody's, I guess, pooling resources and... and, yeah, and we're all independent. Really? Yeah. So we're, we're all independent no and we're all doing our own fundraising. Yeah. And so we're totally independent of each other. And the slate, it's the first time in uh, VC history that this has been done. Mm. And, um, 
and it certainly made it, uh, it's been really helpful because there's a lot of paperwork and there's a lot of red tape yeah. and everything and dates and times and and so we have, um, there's a campaign, a manager who's helped with the training and the, and telling us when we have to have things in by and and that's been really helpful. Yeah. Um, and honestly, more than that, um, yeah, I know for sure we're all independents, yeah? yeah, which is important. No, we're not getting money from anybody. We're not being sponsored by anyone. We're not trying to push anybody's agenda. It's really um, ourselves, you know. Yeah. So I think that's um, that is for good for people to know that too, that yeah. we're not being sponsored by anybody. But, but sometimes when, when people run a slate, there mm -hmm. is the, you have a common belief, right? So, but, and I guess I do have your flyer. I mean, you, it, it, it authorized by the financial agent Clark Olson. Like, who, who, who he explained yeah. who Clark Olson is? Yeah, so he, he's, he just volunteered to do the finances for us and okay. to be able to, um, again, because most of us running, as far as I know, it's every, there's, there's one person I know for sure that has run before. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Surrey, uh, but they uh, they never they were never in and um, yeah so the, nobody else has really done it before. Yeah. So we're all real really new at this and so we certainly it's certainly been very helpful and um, yeah it, and we've had a lot of fun doing it and uh, especially the three of us and uh, we've um, yeah it's been really enjoyable actually once we got all the paperwork in <laughs> so so as, as a i mean you're all independent which is great i mean i think it's fantastic but but is it tied to any kind of political belief or or, or spiritual con connection or you guys just just you just the you know when you say parents voice and you someone wrote something that said parents need you know you know more independent voice uh, you know community values transparency openness parents primacy primacy and learning excellence students first like someone had to write that had to meet and oh, decide yeah. that and yeah. and then 29 people said that's me but yeah so but but it's yeah. kind of I don't know I think 29 people I could get to agree to this you know oh, what I'm really? uh, I so, mean not to so this but I'm just one we're thing parents we're sure. all parents right and yeah. I mean it, it, I, I think in my school I could get people like this if uh, that all to be on the same page it's not yeah. difficult because people um, people are feeling dissatisfied they are mm. definitely so what are they dissatisfied so about though is it like the financially we're doing well mm -hmm. right as a school trustee you 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 have no power to change curriculum or or change th in what the school district is doing so as as a slate of 29 people say you get say yeah, they're all elected mm -hmm. what influence can you can you do to address what you think parents are concerned about and, it, well, and what are they concerned about well what are they concerned about what 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 i've heard a really huge issue is a lack of support for the children and this is what we're talking about is putting the children first there are a growing number of children being diagnosed with autism children with all kinds of you know adhd uh, fas i mean the, the right now i'm working with um, and a, a blind girl, I'm working with a little kindergarten girl who has a feeding tube, and I'm working with two autistic boys. And, uh, and that's not unusual for an EA, an education assistant, or an SEA, they called in some districts, um, to have that many children. And you get drawn away and pulled away, and, and the children, a lot of the children are just not getting the attention that they need. Um, so that is a, a lot of parents are really not happy about that. And I have to add that um, that the EAs are not even paid a livable wage. They earn approximately, depending on the district, thirty-five to thirty-seven thousand dollars a year. It's not even a livable wage in the, in the Lower Mainland. And that is something that I would definitely like to. I don't know what authority we have, but uh, how we can uh, help with with that because these mainly women, they are. We need more and more men involved because um, they. It's always good to have a balance, and um, they are uh, just ran off their feet, and they actually need two income. They need to go and get another job to be able to survive. So that's something that really needs to be looked at, and a lot of parents. That, would, I would say, was the main thing that they mentioned. 
Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, and then, and just, just I'm helping you, you know, you can explain this. So when you say not n politically indoctrination, like just ex explain to me what that, what that means to you. Like, what a, a political indoctrination? Yeah. Well, you know, something, I don't know if you've watched uh, in the States, uh, we like the critical race theory. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you think of that or if you know much about that. But it is, your, it is something, it's something that um, is creeping into the schools. So that's, um, that's something to also have, uh, be watching out for and to see uh, how it's going to be uh, implemented. And, and again, parents need to be aware of it, you know, um, because I always think at the end of the day, it's, it's you and I and, and, and parents and, and generations behind, before us that have, they build the schools, we pay the salaries, you know, we, we, our tax dollars are financing this. And so it's a, it's a, a partnership that we need to work parents with the uh, administrators and with the board and, and with the government. We need to be able to work together to, to keep the customer, which is the parents and their children, keep them happy mm. and keep doing, I mean, Canadian schools, um, so just to, so so how how do we get the U.S. you know sort of critical race into Canadian? What 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 is the concern? What are you, what are you seeing that tells you it's happening or you or is going to happen? You know, like what is what? Yeah, I, I, just, I always like a positive spin on things. How I see is that we are so diverse. How are we going to create unity? Not how are we going to separate different cultural groups? How we all have lots in common. Um, how are we going to celebrate each and every um, cultural group? Because the one school that I worked at, we it was a, it was actually a private school, Montessori school, and what we did was we invited the parents from every cultural group to come in and to share with us about their culture and to. Uh, celebrate with them. They would bring in food, they would maybe wear traditional clothing, and we would understand. And just, this is all to prevent racism because there is racism, and especially through the whole COVID thing, there was a lot of racism towards towards Asian people, which is, which is terrible. But the one thing that, that totally um, stops racism in its track is knowledge. And once people have the knowledge of, other, of each other's uh, cultures, then that it breaks down barriers straight away. So how can we in District 43 create an, uh, um, a, a culture of unity? And, that, and that's what I think is really, really important. And you know, and that, that is how um, anything that's, that would come in that would not necessarily be serving the higher good of people, something like uh, unity and focusing on the virtue of unity would be a critical part. So we could have a critical virtuous uh, program <laughs> which, would, uh, which would solve all the problems. So you can always shine a light you know, on uh, without having to get sucked into some kind of dark tunnel, uh, you know, about the negativity of something. So uh, just uh, before we close, and thanks mm -hmm. for coming in, just uh, if you give uh, gifts, you know, you're running for school trustee, you're yes. running as a slate, but it's you're all about yourself. So uh, what would you say to folks out there uh, who uh, should consider voting for you in this election? Yeah, if you want to have your voice back, we're saying part of you didn't find that one there, it's on there, is we want to take back the parent, the schools for parents. We want parents to have input. We want to hear from parents. And if you vote for Parents Voice BC, we will do everything we can in our power to give you your voices back, and we will be there to represent you. Well, Belinda, thank you very much for coming in. That's great. You're welcome. That's thank Belinda you. Wheatley, who's running for school trustee in the city of Coquitlam. So uh, if you want to know more about Parents Voice, check out their online website. and. Uh, and sure they have some interesting things and or give them a call and find out more. Mm -hmm. This is Peace. Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. Thanks for watching.